Hello, I'm James Preston for Calkine Media and welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. In this episode, I'll be shining a light on Arc Mines and the best way to gain an insight is to sit down with the Managing Director, Roger Jackson. Roger, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, James. Roger, first and foremost, take me through the focus of Arc Mines. Where do most of your time and resources go to? Well, we're, we're focused in North Queensland. We've got a, a, an area, I guess, of surrounding Mount Garnet <clears throat> of three tenements. Um, one tenement is, is focused on uh, iron and, and copper. The other is nickel cobalt. And the, the third tenement that we have is, is a porphyry copper gold system, which uh, is uh, somewhat uh, earlier stages than the other two. The other two, we, we're hoping to move into uh, production at some stage in the future. And I understand as well from a lot of your activities, it is focused heavily on some of those key battery minerals and EVs have now obviously been identified as a big part of the future of transportation. How, how does that work into the future for ARC? Sure. Look, we, you know, we, I mentioned we have uh, uh, the nickel cobalt, which is at Gunnawarra. We recently drilled um, a, a, a decent size uh, nickel deposit out there. Um, it's uh, it's quite a good uh, little deposit at this stage. It's got it's expandable as well, and the grades are good enough to uh, potentially uh, direct ship. So we mm -hmm. we plan to to get on the, the bandwagon with the uh, battery metals and and be exporting some um, nickel cobalt in the future. Well, let's focus on the Gunawara project itself. Now, you mentioned that you've had some recent drilling success. There's also the identification test work, which is currently ongoing. Um, what would you say your ultimate expectations for the project are and what are the near term plans for it? OK, so we're, we're working through a resource at the moment um, that's been uh, undertaken by a group um, uh, over the next probably three to four weeks. From there, we're, we're looking at uh, the also the benefic beneficiation, as you mentioned. Mm. Uh, there's test work going on here in Brisbane at the moment uh, to look at uh, taking out some of the magnetic um, magnetite, which would upgrade the uh, nickel cobalt uh, and potentially provide another uh, stream of um, uh, credit with the iron. But uh, at this stage, that's not the important part. The important is just to see if there is some beneficiation of the nickel, um, of course, uh, the higher the grade, the, the more profitability that there is in in the product. Um, but uh, it, you know, we we are still confident that even at the grades that we have, we potentially have a product saleable. And how long do you think that process will take to assess the uh, the purity, I guess, of the uh, the minerals? Well, look, it's it's probably you know nearing completion, so we're probably you know a couple of weeks, and we should have that that information. Um, and then you know we we will have. Uh, uh, the resource being worked on or is being worked on as we speak and probably finished in the next uh, couple of weeks as well, uh, maybe a month. And then and then we'll assess uh, you know, uh, the process of, of permitting and moving to production, mm. um, which also you know, does require some work, of course. But um, again, we're reasonably confident that, uh, that we've got a, a project that uh, is amenable to uh, direct to direct ship. Well, obviously that's only one project and you mentioned at the start of our chat here that there are a few uh, under the wraps at the moment of Arc Mines. Let's have a little focus on Mount Jesse. Can you give us some insight into that project and what exactly is happening there? Yeah, so, so Mount Jesse is uh, an iron um, scarm and uh, is associated with a number of other iron um, scarms within the area. In fact, there's a group uh, that's mining those iron scarms successfully I must say, uh, we've made quite a quite a bit of money out of it. They've been shipping out of the Marilia port up in below Cairns uh, for some time, and uh, that material um, is very, you know, similar to what we we um, look to to uh, to work on. And uh, associated with ours, however, is uh, is copper, which is slightly uh, slightly a different tilt to these other um, deposits in the area. So. Uh, you know, the copper is interesting. There's some high grade uh, oxide copper there, which um, we, we did earlier in the piece um, get to uh, line up a MOU with a, a, a copper um, a processing plant up near Chiligo. So, you know, we, we have our ducks uh, aligned 
in relation to um, production with uh, the copper. If it pans yeah. out to be, um, uh, you know, commercial, we will be um, drilling there um, sometime soon. We are awaiting some um, uh, uh, approvals, and uh, we look to look to be drilling uh, now just sometime um, next few months. And the process of those approvals, is it looking likely that you will indeed gain the clearance to go ahead with things? Oh, sure. You know, look, they, they, it all happens, but everything at the moment, as you would understand, James, is, um, uh, you know, a bit slower than what uh, we, we're used to. There's um, there's a lot of demand for, the, you know, the department, some resources, a lot of demand for, you know, the assaying services and, and a lot of demand for drilling services. So. Yeah, it's a bit slower, but yeah, no, we're, we're getting there and, um, you know, we're pretty excited for the future on our chest. Well, speaking of demand, obviously there's been an enormous amount of demand for those battery minerals, which are crucial for EV makers. How do you think the demand and supply dynamics for lithium in particular can change in the coming years? Is, is that an area you can really see yourself um, taking quite a bit of advantage of? Well, look, we haven't. We haven't got lithium within our suite, but certainly, look, they, they're all hand in hand. I mean, if lithium's doing well, trust me, nickel's going to be doing well, and, and so is cobalt. Um, they're all part of a, a, a you know, the, the mix. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a the soup's not made up of one ingredient, um, and certainly batteries aren't. And uh, you know, nickel, cobalt, and copper are, are a big part of uh, the, the battery uh, metal scene, in, in particular. You know. Copper is part of the whole, um, uh, you know, uh, electric, electrical scene. If you like, you know, you're needing copper for, for the motors and for windings and for all the, the, the you know, the wires within a within a car and within, you know, wind turbines. So across the board, you know, those three metals are, are very important. And um, you know, we, we we feel that um, we're on the, you know, we're on the right right metal at the moment. No, I think that's a very apt description that a soup is not made from one ingredient, I can tell you now, having just cooked a minestrone because it's been very cold over here in Sydney. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got a lot going in it, mate, and certainly that's the case for EVs as well. But um, just with EVs, I mean, how do you see the market playing out? Obviously, there is that huge demand at the moment. We're also seeing, especially here in Australia, a gradual shift in, in the uptake of EVs. Can you see that sustainability in terms of that growth exponentially just continuing or will it taper off eventually? Well, James, look, I'm 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 no expert in this, but uh, I'm a geologist um, and a very simple man. But but uh, uh, when when governments tell you what you'd have to do and tell you <laughs> that you're going to have electric cars um, and that's it, there's no other choice. I guess um, I, you know, in Europe, have done that. Germany's Germany's doing that. I, I guess I guess there's uh, it's a no-brainer. Um, they're going to need batteries to run these cars. But you know, look. I, what I find intriguing is that you know everything you do now seems to, to use a battery. You know, mm. as I said, I'm, I'm an old school um, sort of guy, and you know, used to use a petrol uh, um, chainsaw. I mean, you know, we've got chainsaws now that are batteries, um, battery operated. And, you know, jackhammers that are that are battery operated. You know, so you know, it's just the way of the future. Batteries are going to be every part of our lifestyle mm. um, going forward. No, I think you're 100% right. Look, certainly you've got more uh, ability with hardware than I do. I can't hold a chainsaw, I can't use a jackhammer. So I'll definitely leave that in your capable hands, whether it be- Oh, James, I'm not saying not. I'm good at it. I, I own one, <laughs> but I'm not saying I'm good on it. You still it on your limbs. So that's a, that's a good start. I might not. Um, but let's, let's keep going down this idea of EVs for the moment. Now, obviously, you, you've mentioned that you've got nickel, you've got cobalt. Do you see yourself, and I know we talked a little bit about the soup here, but with Arc Mines, it, how important is it to continue doing these projects like Mount Jesse, like Gunawara, to try and, I suppose, capitalise on those market conditions? You're talking about how they're sort of, I suppose, set down from government parameters. Um, does it give you a great deal of scope to really expand things? Well, it does. Look, we, we, we are coming off a small base. We're a small company, small, um, small shareholding base. Um, but that, that gives you the springboard for, you know, shareholder value. And with um, having the right metals and having a view that we, we do wish to get into production at some point in the future and sooner the better um, mm. for our, from our point of view, um, knowing that, uh, you know, we do have a, a market in the future 
makes it makes a big big difference. You know, I've been in other medals in the past, and you're never never quite sure where the market's going to be. Um, but um, you know, I, I, it, there's such a good and strong demand for copper, um, you know, nickel and cobalt that it's, it would be hard to hard to think that um, the market is not going to be there for you when we, we do finally um, get into production. So uh, it, our job at the moment is to develop up a, a, you know, a reasonable resource, get a, a decent product together and, and then you know, start the, the process of, of moving to uh, some sort of production. But um, yeah, look, I'm, we're reasonably confident that we're on the, we're on the right, um, right metal, as I mentioned before. Now, I'm not sure how deeply you can go into this particular point within the business, but obviously we've just wrapped up the financial year. How is the uh, the year to date result for you? Well, look, you know, we're we're an explorer, so you know, money just goes out the door. Um, mm. But uh, one thing I can say is we're probably one of the cheaper. Um, you know, we're we're, we're a low cost um, outfit. Um, you know, we don't run an office. Um, ben and I are hands on directors. Um, we get our hands dirty. And um, you know we're spending the money in the ground. Um, as I said, uh, it's uh, we, we sort of a tight little uh, structure and a, a, a small shareholding um, and sticky shareholders, I believe. Pretty good, pretty good base shareholders. So you know we've got a we've got a good uh, uh, good view of the, the future. If uh, if we do the right things, I think our shareholders are going to be uh, well rewarded. You, know, you said you get your hands dirty. We know that from the uh, the electric chain, so that's for sure. And Roger, just before I let you go, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with your existing shareholders and prospective investors alike? Yeah, I know. Look, you know, we're we're very um, happy with, with the way our shareholders are stuck with us. We understand that you know, it's an absolutely uh, terrible time we're going through at the moment with some of the um, you know the equities and and it's you know and, and the world's a different place at the moment. But you know. Fundamentally, everything's going to um, come good. We know that um, the world economy's, um, you know, going to come out of this quite strong. We believe, and, and there's going to be a lot of demand for, for metals. There's no doubts about that. And um, I think we're we've got the right um, structure as a company for shareholders to see the rewards um, going forward. No, it, it, uh, I would very much agree with that, Roger, especially have a look over here in New South Wales, for example, there's a huge push at the moment for infrastructure to get us back out of this COVID-19 induced slump that we've been in for the last few years. So I think there's plenty of room for you guys to capitalise and it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today. Thank you, James. Roger, thank you so much for your time. That is Roger Jackson, the Managing Director at Arc Mines. And if you did miss any part of that chat, and catch the full interview on our YouTube channel, just head to Kaokai Media and make sure to subscribe while you're there. I'm James Preston, reminding you to stay apprised and invest wise with Kaokai Media.